So I'm going to speak a bit of universal acceptance. This is a concept that is closely connected to with ICANN, but involves all the various components of internet governance. And I'll uh, make uh, a distinction that I think is important, and that it's the difference between script and language. This is something that we don't discuss much, but script is very specific in language. It's, it's much more specific than language. So it's a set of the base elements of defined symbols, A, E, I, O, U. These are parts of a script, but in Japanese, for instance, it's nani no, and it is represented in a completely different manner. And also, we have language. It's the situation where we use the scripts to communicate something specific or a, a specific community, like, hello, how are you? And in, in Japanese, it's konnichiwa, genki desu ka. So these are all ways we communicate, but in a very different way. So an example of that is, is that Korean is a language that uses the script Hangul. And when we think of this, we need to think that the reality in America is completely different from what happens in other regions in the world, because here we use essentially the uh, uh, language. And we have a map here that with all the IDNs uh, associated to the names of countries, the CCTLDs. So these are 62 IDNs, uh, uh, IDN CCTLDs approved. So it, those are, there's a range of scripts in different regions, and it's the way that the people in the different countries communicate. So the solution so far was to say, you, you have to communicate in ASCII, and that's okay. But if our intention, if what we want is is to uh, do away with the digital divide. For many people, this is not possible. So how does this work? How does universal acceptance work? In 2011, the UR, uh, it was possible to create complete URLs in a no ASCII characters. And the technology that permits that is like a Punic code. And Punic code, Unicode is Unicode represented in ASCII. And the example that I have is the site of China Mobile. And the, this is in Chinese uh, characters or pictographs. Now, for the entire DNS system, the, the issue is that this doesn't mean anything because the DNS is ASCII. So what the Punicode does is a sort of translation, the so-called A label, XN, etc. And for the practical purposes, it can you can do it yourself. So this site gives you an idea of how Unicode. Uh, works and an example that I um, liked a lot was the Indian characters because it's a continental um, a language with uh, 22 official languages and the people listen their English in e uno or dos or tres. So you have 22 official languages, 13 official alphabets and there are specific alphabets for the languages. So it's a sort of, in a diversity policy, the government established that the domain dot Bharat, that means, uh, uh, that is the Indian Republic, 
or Republic of India would have uh, several variations. You can see the different IDNs. These are the scripts. While the language that is associated to the scripts is here, Devanagari, Bengali, Telugu, etc. But we are speaking only of one specific country. But we have, uh, so we have quite a broad range in, uh, in just a specific uh, country because we, um, the uh, perception in the Americas is very different from the way the Asians understand it, etc. Because we are not used to, to that, but it's a reality that we need to start addressing. And it's not just uh, the issue of, of uh, the scripts, but also the new TLDs, the so-called new TLDs. Maybe they are not so new. Many of them were created in 2012, 2013, but they are not fully accepted yet. So there are issues here. I was more specific with the GOTLDs because if you have a bit, if you have business in Tokyo, why, why not use uh, dot Tokyo? Because this gives you a possibility to diversify a different aspect uh, and uh, to innovate in uh, terms of domain names. So with universal acceptance, we speak of the different scripts and the new GT, uh, GOTLDs. Now, how do you go about with uh, universal acceptance? Because it's not simple at all. I am I'm a researcher. I work uh, implementing universal acceptance in a number of projects. And the problem is that we have five different stages. First, we have to accept, then validate, process, store, and display. And, yeah, well, in, essentially, we are, work, we are talking of operations, of web operations and internet that need, that you need to store the information in a database. And then you have to extract it, but then the input and part of a browser, so there are different layers to this. And this is because it's not so easy. This is not about just how one component works, but the entire software structure of that universal acceptance. So if you manage to accept in the browser, the web and, and the web structure has can be validated then and then if you can uh, store this in your database well if you cannot do that then you have no way to process or present it so there is a very specific dependency And these are different parts that are operated by different people, by different groups, and sometimes they don't communicate with one another. So here I have a couple of problems. For example, we are in a LACNIC environment now, and there are some more specific problems that the technical people can understand better. For those who are not uh, experts in the technical area. Well, I apologize. This is not a very big part of the presentation, but uh, in order to accept the email address and internationalization, EAI, which are these that incorporate the universal acceptance, 
SMTP has to use PUTF-8. It is not very common to implant UTF-8. This is something that you have to do specifically. And there are many problems. The domain names can be longer than expected because in GOTLDs, there are domain extensions that have 10 characters or 12 characters. So this is quite complex, you know, from writing from right to left. So it's not so easy to process. And this poses a challenge to the way we normally think. When, when we try and when we speak about internet domains. And then we have the variant characters, which in China, for example, it is quite common that these are written in a different way, but the meaning is the same. So how can you find solutions to these things, particularly when we think in concepts of concepts such as phishing? And finally, and not uh, less important, is that the testing has to be done with languages that are unknown to the developers. In other words, you have to have a whole set of scripts that are not part of uh, their experience. So the back end part has a whole series of issues that have to be taken account. Then regarding the front end, also has its issues. One of the main things is the obsolete code. Now we have a great diversity of implementations, of JavaScript, but the point is that many, many sites use codes that have been made to validate just a specific part of the script with letters from A to Z and numbers from one to nine. And I have here examples that we carried out in our research. And for those of you who are developers, you can note that these are very simple. They do not take into account many things. And sometimes they are not successful when validating domains um, to, to foundation to some night dot aero. One of the things that is important in my opinion is a global survey that I carried out with a group of experts. And the premise was, the objective was to evaluate compliance with universal acceptance in the 1,000 most visited websites of the world, according to Alexa, this through sampling the approaches of the development of the field of the email in the forms. So basically, we visited the 1,000 websites, websites that are the most visited in the world, and we saw different ways of setting up an email. So you have the simplest ones, which is, for example, ASCII at ASCII.newsshort to more complex ones. For example, RTL, which is right to left. So that, that is the example of the Arabic. And the results are very interesting. The first survey we carried out was in 2017, and compared to 2019, shows that there has been a change compared 
to the new domains that don't include different threads, like the GOTLs that I, sh that I showed. It's a bit better for these and those who are very specific, this is far better. And for those that are longer, it's also better. Now, the point is that the internationalization, in the case of internationalization, the international scripts are not so much better. Much of the things that we observed, for example, in the Unicode domains, we noted that there was a slight improvement, a slight progress, but we have to bear in mind the fact that this doesn't have too much acceptance. This is 2020, this has already existed for some years already, and acceptance is barely 10 to 15 percent. It is very, very limited. And then the problems for those who are more focused on security issues is that of the homographs. This is an issue that requires a lot of research. For those of you who do not know, there are some characters that in terms of visualization have the same appearance, but from the standpoint of Unicode, they are different. So let me give you an example. In Latin, in Greek, and in Cyrillic, this seems to be the same character, but from the, stand, the standpoint of Unicode, this is different. So this could be used for phishing purposes. Then we have a real example, a case in 2017. There was a bug in Firefox and in Chrome. The website, the example website is epic.com. These are the developers of Fortnite. You're all familiar with Fortnite because all the kids are now involved with uh, Fortnite. Now, for quite a long time, there was a possibility of using what I was explaining with this example. There are similar characters, the homographs, and this was to impersonate a website with very similar results as you can see on the right of the screen. So this is quite an interesting research that was done. There is a link here if you wish to learn more about this. Now, if anyone is interested in this, in helping us, <coughs> With these problems, we are a group. We're a, a global community. We work in the ICANN environment, but we are independent. And you can find us in uasg.tech. Everyone is very interested in learning more about the regional perspectives and if you wish to know more about other languages, the indigenous languages, the Latin languages, or if you can wish to contact me, I also have uh, several papers. You can access my website. And I am very much interested in speaking with all those of you who also are interested in this topic, which is also very important for me, namely that of universal acceptance. So I will stop here now. In order to respect my time slot, I am at your disposal if you wish to contact me. And thank you very much again for your attention.